What's up, my friend? Welcome back. Today, I am going to let you in on the behind the scenes on my personal birthday and Christmas wish list. Why? Because y'all are nosy and you're the ones that tell me you watch this information. So of course I am happy to oblige. My birthday, as you guys might know, is November 14th, which by the time this video goes up probably has already happened. But in my family, we do the wish list thing. We give our family members ideas of things we really have our eye on that maybe we would like to have appear under the Christmas tree. And for me, because my birthday is so close to the Christmas shopping season, my birthday birthday list and my Christmas list are often one and the same. And every year you guys ask me, Brianna, what's on your wish list? What is it that you want for your birthday and Christmas? So today I am here to give you my birthday and Christmas wish list of 2023. Now I really should start it off with a little bit of a disclaimer of this year, an actual concrete wish list was very hard for me to come up with. And that is both an extremely complicated thing because it's the time of year where I actually get to like ask for the fun little frivolous things that I may or may not want to buy myself. But also it's showing me that I have grown in my level of contentment with the belongings I already have. If you've been around here for a while, you know that I'm a self-proclaimed material girl living in a material world. So gift giving season is typically one of my favorite times because I get to ask for things that I've been wanting to get my hands on. But this year, in terms of like things I really genuinely need or really genuinely want, I was hard pressed to come up with answers right away. There was only one thing on my list that I knew for certain that I wanted, which I'll tell you when I get there. But other than that, I was like, what do I need? What do I even want? There's nothing I can really think of that's like this. This is what I'm asking for for Christmas. So it took me a while to come up with a list actually, which is fine. I actually told multiple people and like in the email I sent that's like, here's my list. However, feel free to get creative this year. If you see something that says Brianna, which honestly I'm not all that hard to buy for. If it is pretty, if it is sparkly, if it's Harry Potter related, musical related, or a multitude of different things, odds are I'll be pretty stoked about it. I'm not very hard to buy for if you know generally what I like, but people do like suggestions. They're like, what are you, what are you actually needing? What are you actually wanting? So with that disclaimer that I put up on my email, I did come up with a little bit of a list. It might be boring to some of y'all, but this is honest to goodness what I asked for this holiday season. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I did ask for two books, but I'm going to give you three because I just heard about this next one. And I feel like getting it as a gift, especially when you know it's something that is an issue you might want to resolve in the new year, it's a solid, it's a solid ask. So the first book and like the one book that I knew for certain is on my Christmas list is Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal. The kicker here is it's not released until December 26th. Bummer, I know. And it's a book that I fully intend to purchase for myself if I don't somehow get it ordered for me for Christmas. But I put it on the list nonetheless because I like books. <laughs> and Feel Good Productivity in the year that I have found out that in human design I am a generator and that means doing things that are bring joy and satisfaction and all sorts of human design related talk that doesn't belong in this video. The timing of a book called Feel Good Productivity feels wildly appropriate for me and my personal development and self-discovery journey on my own. So I feel like this book will be a really great meshing of productivity tips that I know I love because I love trying new productivity things, but I'm struggling to find like the productivity hacks or routine that works great for me. So putting the feel good aspect on it might be just the ticket. So I'm very, very excited about this book. Ali has a YouTube channel that I very much enjoy consuming. It's He's full of really, really great content about productivity and things like that. So I'm very excited to support him with his book, but also to consume the content of the book. So Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal. And then Ali is actually one of the people that suggested this book, which is why it's on my list. And that is called Someday is Today by Matthew Dix. And again, it is a routines, productivity related book. And then the third book, the one that didn't make it onto my list, but would be an awesome buy nonetheless, is called How to Break Up with Your Phone by Christine Price. I just heard about this book actually from a vlog I was watching by Jessica Vaughn and I was like, ooh, interesting because y'all know 
that the phone is one of my biggest issues. And so it might be a book that I pick up for myself on Kindle. But if you are somebody who in the new year, you're thinking about maybe needing to modify your relationship with your device, it might be a book worth putting on your list too. And then the boring part of my book section is I asked for Amazon gift cards or someone paying for my subscription to Kindle Unlimited. I am a chronic book buyer and consumer. And I know that during the next year, there will be probably at least a dozen books that I want to purchase for myself. So asking for an Amazon gift card earmarked specifically for book purchases is a really great way for me to be like, okay, thank you for the books that aren't out yet, but thank you for paying for the books that I plan to consume in 2024. Moving on to the next category of stuff, and it is of course my beauty wish list. I really do enjoy asking for beauty things for Christmas and for my birthday because it's a great way for someone to spoil you just a little bit and buy the high-end things that again, you wouldn't typically buy for yourself. Usually I have a high-end perfume or something on this list, but I'm actually still using up the perfume stuff I got last year. So I didn't even need to ask for perfume, but I added a couple of things which are gonna sound kind of boring because some of them are repurchases of products I have already purchased for myself and have since used up, but they're very, very practical, which I know isn't always fun, but it makes sense to have them on my list. And the first thing is the Drunk Elephant TLC Baby Face Sukari Facial Mask thing. It's in this little container. It's $80 for the container, but it is a use it once a week hardcore facial exfoliant. And why? Why is this on my list? Because my skin is going through a moment and it is so dry. It is so dry that when I put on makeup, you can see all of the dry skin. And my new Peach and Lily products have started to help, which is wonderful, but there is still like, I literally yesterday, I took a shower in the night and then I put on as a base layer before anything else, while my face was still a little bit damp, I put on some CeraVe moisturizing cream as like, here's your first layer of moisture facial skin, okay? And then I put on my serum and my other serum and then my heavy duty moisturizer. Like I was piling things on my face and my skin is just so dry. And here's the rule about dry skin, whether it's on your lips, on your body or on your face, you cannot moisturize dead skin. So you need to exfoliate away the dead skin before you moisturize the stuff underneath to try and prevent that from also becoming dry and dead skin. And one of the products that I have used that worked really well as a facial treatment is this Sukari Baby Facial by Drunk Elephant, which is why it is on my wish list. And I don't care if multiple people purchase it for me because it is an expensive product, but it is a great product that I know with 100% certainty I will use. So in order to help combat this issue, I'm, I'm focusing on my chin because this is where I can see it the most, this issue, I'm asking for facial exfoliants. So that is my number one. And then my second product is the BioElements Skin Editor. I used this for quite some time when I was going to see my facialist. And while I haven't gone to see her in like over a year and I'm officially out of that product, here's what I know for sure. I was supposed to use that product three nights a week in a row when I was on her regimen. And I haven't been using that product because I'm all out of it. And lo and behold, I'm having dry, dead skin issues. So not only incorporating the Drunk Elephant once weekly intense facial exfoliant, but adding in the couple times a week leave on nightly AHA treatment is also something I wanna do. And I do have some other AHA treatments, I don't think they work as well as the BioElements one, to be honest with you. So it was an easy ask to throw that one on my list as well. I also asked for a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. If you know that brand name, you know that those eyeshadow palettes are not cheap. It's a stark contrast to the eyeshadow palette that I asked for last year, which was the ColourPop eyeshadow palette. Something about stones or rocks or whatever it is. I love it. I use it every single day. I've used it every day just about since I got it for last Christmas. And I love it and I still have plenty of it left, but there's a new Natasha Denona one out and I was influenced by none other than Sharon Says So. If you know her, you love her. And I, I take everything that she says to heart, right? Like she's, 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 she's one of the good ones, Sharon Says So. And her eyeshadow palettes that she uses every day and her makeup is always flawless, by the way, is Natasha Denona. And I was like, hmm. 
if it's good enough for Sharon, it is good enough for me. And they have a new cool toned eye palette come out that came out called the I Need a Nude palette. And so that's the one I asked for. And then this last beauty product is, is kind of a list of products. And I'm not gonna give you the complete list because for most of you, it's not necessarily going to matter. But y'all remember how I got my colors done by House of Color and two years ago and have discovered since that I am a summer color palette in what I'm supposed to wear on my body. Well, House of Color also has their own makeup line and they have makeup in shades that are curated for each color season. So I had the brilliant idea of like, you know, now is the great time to ask for the pretty pricey, like not wildly ridiculously unreasonable, but kind of unreasonable priced like lip products and whatnot. So I made a list, I went on their website and I made a list of like five or six different lipstick colors, a lip gloss and some blushes that looked like ones I would be interested in trying. I love the House of Color makeup products. I have the lipstick that I purchased when I got my colors done. So it's two years old now. That's how long it's lasted though, on my lips right now. And I love it. I feel like a million bucks whenever I use my House of Color blush, which is the blush I use almost exclusively. It's, it's on my face now, yeah? And the lipsticks, I just love it because I know that I don't have to try. And I automatically know that it's gonna be makeup products that complement my natural coloring, which is great. So the reason I asked for it is because on the website, first of all, if you go to the website, you're gonna freak out because the prices for a lipstick is like $37, yeah. But on their checkout, they ask for your client code. And what this means is if you've actually gone to get your colors done by a House of Colors representative, you have access to a client code. And that gets you 30% off, which knocks the lipstick prices down to about $24, which while still expensive, is no different than a lipstick that you would buy in Sephora at a prestige brand, right? And the quality of the lipsticks is great. I love it. I'm a big fan of the lipsticks and the lip glosses and the blush. And so I have no qualms with that price point. So I actually messaged my consultant. I was like, mm, what is your client code? I don't think they had a client code situation when I got my colors done, but she messaged me back right away. She's like, here's my code. I said, okay, great, thank you. So I gave that code to my family members and said, if you plan on ordering, do not forget to use this code because it will knock 30% off of the prices. So House of Color brand makeup products because why the heck not? Why wouldn't I want an arsenal of lip products all guaranteed to look fabulous on me. Seriously, I think it's brilliant. And I also think a great gift idea, it's not on my list, but a great gift idea is pay for somebody to get their color consultation. I think it is such an incredible gift idea. It's super unique and oh my gosh, the more you know, the more you know, when you can go get your colors done, it's just, you feel like a million bucks in everything that you wear when you start to purchase things in your colors. So I actually did say that. Moving on to the next section, I wrote down clothes, but I didn't ask for anything specific save one item. But here's the guidelines I did say. I'm like, I would love gift cards to any and all of these places. Loft, American Eagle slash Airy, White House Black Market, or the online store Quince, which I have a handful of things from and I absolutely love them. But I'm not necessarily in like dire need of anything specific for clothing. However, in order for my family to be like, I, I didn't want them to have to like wipe off the idea of clothes because I love getting new clothes. So what I did is I said, okay guys, I'm trying really hard to curate a wardrobe that is 98% within my color palette. So I'm going to send you some photos. I, I've attached some photos to give you an idea of what my colors are. And so I attached literally the stuff from House of Color, a photo of my color fan, a photo of like my colors, like all lined up next to each other and a picture of me at my color consultation in my wow colors. So if they did decide that they wanted to get, my, get me an article of clothing, they had color selections and a visual idea of what would look best on me. Because then people have the freedom to go and be like, oh, that screams Brianna, but also they can check in and see if it's something I would actually want to wear. The one exception to this is the one item on my list, which of course is currently sold out. And it is by a little brand called Mojo Provo, and it is their Harry Potter crew neck sweatshirt. The sweatshirt is not in one of my colors and I don't care. It's this beautiful like oatmeal colored crew neck sweatshirt with little embroideries throughout the sweatshirt, all with a different image. So it's like Harry Potter thing, like here's his glasses. Here's like a Hogwarts thing. Here's a frog. Here's the Quidditch, 
the Quidditch goals all throughout this sweatshirt. And it's super cute. It's very expensive and it's currently sold out. So I don't even know if it'll be available, but it is one of those things like every time I see it on her social media, I'm like, oh, I want that, but I don't want to buy it for myself, you know? So I just threw it on there just in case. And then I just have a couple of random things. I did ask for Nespresso pods or gift cards to Nespresso. Why? Because I use my Nespresso machine every single day. So anybody that wants to gift me a box of my favorite kinds of coffee, by all means, I would never say no. And I would always be wildly thankful for someone handing me a sleep of Nespresso pods. Like seriously, when I first got my Nespresso pods, a friend of mine sent me an Amazon gift card and said, this is for your first box of Nespresso pods. And I was able to buy some Nespresso pods. And it was just the most thoughtful gift to be able to provide me with coffee that we know I'm going to use and enjoy. So I did say, because it's the holiday season, I requested gingerbread ones. And I said that the pe the peppermint pinwheel pods I love would would absolutely adore getting some of the peppermint pinwheel pods. My two normal favorites are Melozio and Stormio. I have a virtual machine, by the way. And then I also suggested the, as a gift idea, the Nespresso advent calendar. Why? Because even though I won't be around my Nespresso machine for the actual advent season, it would be a really cool thing to be able to bring home and use in January. Like, I can advent calendar all year round. If I decided to collect 12 different advent calendars and just do one a month for an entire year, that's actually a really brilliant idea. And I don't know why I didn't think of it at the start of advent calendar season, but wow, how smart would that be? It would just be a nice way to be like, ooh, what's my cup of coffee going to be today? Or ooh, my special cup of afternoon coffee is gonna be exclusively from this advent calendar. Something fun. I don't know, it was on the Nespresso website and I was like, that is something I would definitely enjoy. So Nespresso coffee pods or gift cards to Nespresso because I will always 100% use it. Then I wrote down, well, I wrote down something that I want, but it's like not something that's actually on my list. I would love a cleaning person. Dear Santa, I would love somebody to come and clean my house twice a month. Please and thank you. As a random item, I wrote down loop earplugs. They're actually like, they're $25 and they're reusable earplugs. And for years now, for three years now, I've been purchasing and repurchasing purchasing and repurchasing and repurchasing earplugs from the, the pharmacy in Target and the little squishy ones and they eventually wear out their squish. You can wear them for a week or two and then you got to throw them away. And I was like, how brilliant would it be to actually have a pair of permanent, reusable, like environmentally friendly earplugs? Because I sleep in earplugs every single night. And I was like, that's actually a great thing for somebody to purchase for me. And they're only $25. So it's not like a high ticket item or anything. Great idea. So I put that on my Christmas list. I wrote down just as an afterthought because I thought it might be fun to try. There's this microwave popcorn company called Opo Pop. O-P-O-P-O-P. -O -P -O -P. What a fun name. Brilliant whoever came up with that, in my opinion, quite frankly. And it's like super flavored, super special microwave popcorn. Why did I think this was a good idea? Because my husband and I make microwave popcorn multiple days a week, probably three to five days a week. There's microwave popcorn happening in this house. And I thought, what a fun idea to just have something different, something luxury feeling instead of just like the cheap stuff you buy from Target. So I was like, this would be a great gift idea for something for us to try as a couple. Just a little something fun and different and flavored and whatever. Quite frankly, it's probably something I would enjoy more than my husband, but that's okay. And then the, there's the one thing that I know is on my Christmas list and it is a combined gift once again. It's something for the family. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, when we went to their house, they had on their wall this thing called the Skylight Calendar. It is a digital wall calendar and it's, sync it's like Google Cal on an iPad basically is what it is. And you can hang it, you can mount it on your wall and at your complete disposal, you have this like digital picture frame, but it is a touchable, usable calendar that you can sort out by person, by group. You can have different calendars associated with it. And you can do things like add meal plans, grocery lists, and create chore charts with it. And I was like, this is freaking brilliant. And I need one in my house. Why? Because my husband and I actually have a $8 version of this. We have a giant 
desk calendar mounted on our wall at the bottom of our stairs. And every once in a while, when we think to update it, we update it. And so when he's walking downstairs or when I'm walking downstairs, we can look at the calendar and see what the other person has planned or what plans we have as a couple, which is great. And, and, and if that's all you need, awesome. But I love the idea. And he does too. He, when he saw it, he's like, we need to get one of these. And I was like, I agree with you. I'd, I'd actually been thinking about it for a while. And then when he mentioned it, when we were at my brother-in-law's house, I was like, oh good, he's on board. Fantastic. It's going on my Christmas list. But the idea of being able to use an app to, to have our calendars that are already on our various work computers, our personal computers, sync up so we don't actually have to be intentional about when something changes or when we have new plans or every week, make sure you update the calendar. The calendar will automatically update in a beautiful, color-coded, visual piece of joy that I will enjoy looking at. And I can create grocery lists and meal plans and chore lists for each of us. So the honeydew list that my husband currently has plastered on the refrigerator can become a digital list where anytime he goes, what do I need to do? He can go over to it, look at his chore list and pick things to do off of it. Brilliant. Love it. So I love this idea. So that's like the one thing I knew that was going to be on my Christmas list this year was the skylight calendar. And then the one thing I told my husband that I wanted for Christmas, I was like, I still am waiting on a walking pad. I really would love a walking pad for my office. Is it gonna look pretty? No, is it? There's there a practical space for it? Not currently, but I will put it in the middle of the floor anytime I need to take five and just step for a little bit. It's so much easier than having to convince myself to go downstairs and all the other things, right? Just would love a walking pad. So that's like my afterthought. That's the thing I looked at my husband and just last night he goes, well, I need to know what you want for Christmas and your birthday too. We already know what we're getting each other for Christmas. So like, he's like, yeah, but you have a birthday coming up. I'm like, I know I do. And I was like, look, the one thing I can think of is I still want a walking pad. That's it. That's it. That's all that's on my list. So like I said, it's a lot of little, it's a lot of little things, a couple of books, some beauty products, whatever. But that's all I could come up with. Truly. And I could continue to make the list of like every little beauty product or every little book or every little thing. And I'm just like, I don't need the things that badly. So that's the list that I came up with. And I hope you found this enjoyable, helpful, informative, whatever you needed this piece of content to be. Let me know in the comments down below, what is one thing that is on your Christmas or holiday wish list this year? I would love to know what you guys are asking for. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really does help me out. And if you're not a member of the Diva and the Divine community, click that subscribe button. We would love to have you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, happy holidays, and I will see you in my next video.